Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I have an updated best and worst luxury purchases video and you guys seem to really love the last one that I did. And I thought now that it's been almost a year since my last one, I would group together a few of the things I've bought since and show you the best and kind of the worst, sillier, stupider purchases that I spent my money on. And just a little disclaimer, like in the last video, these aren't necessarily terrible products, they just didn't work for me or my lifestyle. And you know, the general gist of the best and worst videos, I do these all the time, so I kind of figure that most of you know this, but just in case you're new. So I'm going to get started with my best shoe purchase that I've made over the past year. And for me, it would 100% be my Chloe Susanna boots. I love these for two reasons. Number one, because they have the same name as me and I love that, like what's not to love about that? That was one of the reasons that I kind of looked into buying them but also they are the most versatile, beautiful boot in the world and I know there are some germaphobes out there that are probably typing right now about the fact that I'm touching the bottom of my shoe. I will wash my hand after. It's okay, it's okay guys. But anyway, they are literally the most versatile shoe that I own. I wear them in the summer with dresses and shorts. I also wear them in the winter as well. They are my perfect shoe. And because I live in the UK, I can really get away with wearing boots in the summer. It's not necessarily something that is completely uncomfortable unless we have a very, very, very hot day, which is very rare. I got them for my birthday in October and I've been wearing them constantly ever since. I would say I wear them daily, but you guys know I work from home and there are some days where I don't wear anything other than slippers on my feet, but I do wear these very, very regularly. I love them. They were so worth purchasing. They are just so gorgeous and I haven't really found that I've had an issue with like the beads popping off or anything like that. They are obviously very expensive, but they were just so worth the money for the fact that they are wearing really well. They just look amazing even though I wear them so regularly. I was prepared for these to blister so badly because lots of people are saying they're like such an uncomfortable boot. I personally found them very very comfortable so yeah favourite shoe purchase ever. Next we are moving on to my favourite sunglasses purchase of all time. I've wanted these for years and I finally got my hands on them last summer and they are my go-to pair of sunglasses. I adore these. They're just they go with everything. They look ridiculous and I look like a bug but I love life when I wear these. The square shape is so up my street and I really like to get these in more colours as well. And then we have my best bag purchase from the last year which is kind of weighty right now because it has all of my stuff in it from the weekend. When I think about all of my bags that I've bought since like last May, this is the one that I've like spent my money on and I would 100% spend my money on again if it got lost or anything like that. I'm very very attached to this bag. It goes with everything. It is the perfect small bag in terms of its size. I didn't expect to love it as much as I do. I bought it and I was like, oh, this could be a real trend bag. It's probably gonna go out in a couple of months and no one's ever gonna wear it again and it's gonna be like a total waste of money. But I really liked the shape of it. I thought it was very cute and I thought that it would work with a lot of things in my wardrobe. I loved the color. At the time I was torn between the Gucci Marmont bag in the petrol blue color or buying this and I have absolutely no regrets. But I'm so, so thankful that I decided to buy this instead of the blue velvet bag because that just wouldn't go with anything in my wardrobe. I would love it and it would be an amazing pop of colour but I know I wouldn't get the wear out of it like I do with this one. I think this is my favourite of my small kind of chain over the shoulder bags and it's partly due to the colour and the fabric of it. It is just so perfect for my wardrobe. It's very neutral. I also love a bit of suede. You guys know this. I always buy very, very impractical bags that have a bit of suede on them. But the thing I like about this is that it's got this one bit of suede on the front, but everything else is like a smooth leather. And for me, that works really well because if it's raining or there's a little shower that I get stuck in, I just turn it round or it's small enough that I can just pop it underneath my coats that I'm wearing. It's just held up so well. Like I wear this with dark jeans very, very regularly and have absolutely no color transfer on the back, which I just think is incredible. It's a very smooth leather as well, and I have very few marks on it, if any. And even though I'm not a lover of gold, and this has a yellow gold on it, which is very yellow, it still doesn't ever seem to clash with anything in my wardrobe. Can you tell I love this bag? I really, really do. It also hasn't really scratched around here, like on um, a lot of the other Chloe Drew bags. Did I say this was the Chloe Drew? It's the Chloe Drew, by the way. Quite often, lots of my friends say that their little keychain pops out, like falls and rubs on the material, but I think they've actually made the chain longer and the chain is also thicker now. I just find that it doesn't actually ever seem to rub on my bag. It doesn't fall out and do that, so it doesn't leave any marks. I think they may have made some tweaks to the design of the Chloe Drews after the first round because I just don't have any of the problems 
with this bag that a lot of my friends have. And yeah, it is a great bag, fits so much in it, so, so much. I don't even find it too fiddly to open and close either, because quite often, if I'm like opening and closing my bag a lot, I just leave it like that. I really did like sit down and have a long think about what my favorite bag purchase of the last year was. And I think in terms of its versatility, its practicality, this is my absolute favorite one. By the way, if you wanna go and see what my best and worst purchases were from the last year, I will link the previous video in the info box for you guys, because there might be some bags that you've seen in other videos that you're thinking, but why isn't that your best purchase? And there's a good chance that it might have been in the video before. So those are my best purchases, and now we're going to move on to my worst purchases. And these aren't necessarily horrible, products like things that are just terrible but these are things that don't work for my lifestyle i've had a bad experience with them i haven't really got the wear out of them that i thought i would when i purchased it you know a lot of the times you see an item and you think oh my god i'm gonna get so much wear out of that it's gonna fit really well into my wardrobe and you'll just never end up actually wearing it because there's something that doesn't actually end up feeling quite right these things happen to the best of us and i always think that it's good to talk about the things that don't quite work out in the hopes that i might save someone else a few pennies so i have a worst sunglasses purchase which which I'm really sad about because when I bought these I thought I would wear them so much and I would get so much wear out of them. I just really haven't. These are also really dirty. How have I managed this? These are the Dior So Real like reflected sunglasses I think. They've got like yeah Dior reflected on the inside and these are in the gold which it's so beautiful. I really like this. It's like a rosy gold almost. It's a very warm, non-yellowy gold and that works really well for me, my skin tone. The fact that I wear lots of rose gold anyway, it's not too yellow. It just blends in really nicely with everything that I wear, but I don't actually get the wear out of these. So they are definitely a different style to the original Dior So Real sunglasses, but I really like them. I like the fact that they're a little bit see-through. I love them on, they look great, but when the sun hits you from anything but straight on, it will reflect on the inside of the sunglasses and it is honestly one of the worst experiences I've ever had with any pairs of sunglasses. My original Dior So Reals don't do this like these do. I don't I don't really understand why it happens, but it's really not the most pleasant experience when wearing these, so I really don't get that much wear out of them. But next we have this dress and this is from Self Portrait. It's a gorgeous dress. Lots of you will have seen me wear this for my birthday get ready with me. I have worn this once maybe twice but honestly I very rarely wear this and in comparison to all of my other self-portrait dresses which I do get wear out of this is the one that I have worn the least and I reach for the least I also feel like this isn't the most flattering fit on me and I have to be in a particular mood to wear this this definitely isn't something that goes with everything for every kind of formal occasion that I go to unlike a lot of my longer midi style self-portrait dresses it was the least sensible purchase from self-portrait I've ever made unfortunately so yeah I'm not really sure what to do with this one let me know if you would like to see it on my depot so my final worst purchase is one that was a very recent purchase and I want to disclaim this before I show this because I knew when I bought this that this was not a sensible purchase it was something that I wanted for a very long time that I loved the design of a colour that I loved and it was like the last one in stock when I saw it and I had to have it. So this is my Gucci Dionysus bag in the tan grey beige suede colour. I love this, this is a beautiful bag. This is one of the more expensive bags that I have ever purchased and I knew going into this that this wasn't going to be the most practical material in the whole entire world. I have other suede bags, I know it's not a practical material. I'm generally quite careful with them, I protect them best, as best I can. I did the same with this one, as soon as I got it, used like a protectant on it. And up until a couple of weeks ago I had absolutely no issues with it, I loved it. The sizing of it is perfect, it fits so much in. It works perfectly with pretty much every outfit that I own. I love the vibe of these bags. Ever since they came out, when they started doing them in like one block colour rather than the monogram, I knew that I needed one. I did originally want a black one, but I went for the lighter colour and I have a lot of black bags anyway, so I just thought that this colour would be the one and it would be the perfect year-round bag, which I still think it is. It was wearing fairly well, bar like, you know, marks on the suede, which are obviously going to happen until a couple of weeks ago when I wore one blue pair of jeans which I have never ever had an issue with transferring on any other bag. It is so blue and green in this corner. It, It's like, 
it makes me really sad. I knew at some point something was gonna rub on the back and it was, or even on the front, and it was going to get a little bit marked. I wasn't quite expecting this. I still love this bag. I still will wear it all the time. I don't think after this I would buy another all suede bag. I do think that that is a recipe for disaster unless they are black. Like my Balenciaga I have no issues with because it is obviously black. But I did wanna put this in the worst section because it is one of the stupidest purchases I have ever made. I knew going into this that something like this would happen or it would mark or something like that and it really does like mark quite easily there are marks all over this but i didn't buy this to not wear it and to not have it be loved so like i said it's not one of the worst purchases that i'm really upset about because it's not like i'm not using it this was never going to be one that i would recommend for the price of it i do think that this in terms of what it is, is just very, very overpriced for how quickly it has transferred. It is a very practical bag for me though, in terms of how much it can fit, what it can fit, and for my daily lifestyle, the shape and structure of it is amazing. But the material was a mistake, I knew that going into it, but I loved the look of this bag, and the front of the bag is still perfect. It's unfortunately the back that just looks a complete mess now. But yeah, I have very mixed feelings on it because I love most of the aspects of this bag, but I think the material is just a total mistake. It was a massive mistake on my part. But at the same time, I love it. I have really mixed feelings about it and I think that's okay. But if you have any recommendations for getting blue stains out the back of suede, let me know. So that is it for my best and worst luxury purchases. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this and found it helpful if you were thinking of purchasing any of these. I know the Gucci in particular, a lot of people were commenting saying they were thinking of buying and could I do a review? So I hope that has kind of cleared things up on my thoughts on that bag. Like I said, if you have any questions, please pop them in the comments below. And if you're new here, I would love it if you could subscribe. I'll leave a little subscribe button around here. And I'll also leave some previous videos up here for you to go and watch as well. But that is it from me today. I hope you're all having the best day and I will see you guys in my next video.